Hello guys, hope you all are doing great. Actually, I am today a uh, lot more excited because we are going to leave our topic the bar chart and today we will focus on the next type of writing task one that is line chart. So most of you uh, may wanted to uh, do the line chart discussion. So today I have left the bar chart topic and now we are going to do the line chart. Well, first thing I want to tell you is that uh, line charts are not uh, too much different from the bar chart. We have just different representation in the form of line chart. The bar charts include the different colored bars, but on the other hand, if uh, I talk about the line charts, they have different lines. So the representation of the thing is different. Bar charts have the bars or the line charts have the lines. However, the way of doing both type of the charts is similar. And uh, the difference that I always notice in bar charts and line charts is that it is a little difficult in bar chart to find the increasing and decreasing trend. However, in the lines, we can easily see whether the percentage or the amount is increasing or decreasing. So without wasting any time, let's start our video and we will discuss this line chart example today. So I have not taken any difficult line chart. We have just taken a small example which is very easy to do. So we will look how to do the paraphrasing, how to do overview, how to write body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2. So in this video we will discuss everything starting from uh, the paraphrasing and till the body paragraph 2. We will discuss complete solution of this line chart. So bear with me, we will do everything in detail. So as we do in the bar chart, the first step uh, in the bar chart is to uh, write the introduction. Same goes here in the line chart. The first step includes introduction in which uh, those who don't know, we uh, just rewrite the given statement, the statement that is given by the examiner. We just rewrite that statement in our own words, verbs uh, to make the examiner understand what we are going to discuss in the paragraphs. So the first step is introduction in which we paraphrase the given statement. So we have the statement over here. So before writing the statement, as I always tell you that it's necessary to look at the chart. So first, let's look at the chart. So here is the line chart. If we talk about bar chart, we have the bars over here, standing from here. However, if you see this line chart, we have the lines which are uh, starting from the vertical axis. However, the bars start from the horizontal axis. So this is the little difference that we can see. So here we have different lines. We have different patterns in the line. Each pattern is stating each country. However, in the bars, we have different colors in the bars. So this is how they are differentiating the bar chart from line chart. So let's see what is uh, given in the line chart. Here on the vertical axis, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. These are the numbers. And what the numbers are showing is CO2 emission in metric tons. It is the amount of CO2 which was emitted per person. So these lines are showing different countries. UK, Sweden, Italy and Portugal. Here we have different years. 1967, 1977, 1987, 1997 and 2007. So we have five different years. So what the chart is showing, it's showing the amount of CO2 that was emitted in five different countries in five different years. So this is how we firstly understand the chart before even attempting to write the introduction. This is our statement. The graph below shows average carbon dioxide emission per person in the United Kingdom, Sweden, Italy and Portugal between 1967 and 2007. This is the given statement and we have to introduce it to the examiner by changing the words and phrases. So let's take the first small section, the graph. So they haven't mentioned what type of graph, so it's our duty to mention the type. So I'm going to do uh, like this, the given line chart. So we have changed this, the graph, instead of writing this, we have written the given line chart. So what uh, it says next, the graph below shows average CO2 emission. It is showing the average CO2 emission. So we have the word emission. It comes from 
the word emit and the second form of the word emit is emitted so if we are given this this type of word and it's not the verb so it's important to use the verb in the statement because from here he will come to know that the examiner will come to know that we will do the chart or we will describe it in the past sentences because if we write uh, first we'll look at the example how i do this the graph below shows average co2 emission i would write the amount of co2 emitted emitted it comes from emit emit is the first form of verb second is emitted that is the past form and third is also emitted these are regular verbs third one is the perfect form so we are going to do this data and we are going to describe this data in past sentences because we have past years so it is important and necessary to use the past verbs that's why i have i have used the given line chart sorry compares the amount of co2 emitted because it was emitted in the past so amount of co2 emitted per person in the united kingdom sweden italy and portugal in five sorry we have four in four different nations between instead of writing between i am going to write from 1967 to 2007 this is how we introduce the chart we don't have to make it complex and complete uh, complicated uh, if we make it complicated examiner will feel it difficult to understand what we are going to do so the sense of the given statement must not be changed we can change the words also fine this is how we do or introduce the given statement so this is our first step that is introduction so the next step is writing an overview those who don't know what the overview is in the overview we have to make two or three sentences this is the next paragraph that comes after paraphrasing so in this we make two or three sentences describing two different points each have different idea and different uh, the trends we can say so in the bar chart as we describe increase and decrease the maximum and minimum value same goes for this line chart we will look the co2 emission uh, the maximum amount of co2 emitted in which country and which country emitted least amount of co2 and we will also look for the amount whether it increased or decreased in the countries so these are the things that we find in overview and it is also important that we must not include the exact value percentage or number of something we just have to give the rough idea of what's going into the chart so that we can use that rough idea to describe our body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 so let's look on the line chart and find what are the trends and changes in the bar chart if you see this line it is showing united kingdom so what we can conclude from this we can say that the co2 emission was maximum in united kingdom so the maximum amount of co2 was emitted in united kingdom during the time period in all the years the amount of co2 emitted was maximum than other countries in united kingdom so this is the one point which is stating the maximum value we can also write and talk about portugal which emitted least amount of co we are going to make one sentence of these two countries we will compare these two countries in one point this will make our one sentence and we have talked about now countries and we have compared these countries now next we also we have done discussing these now we also have to discuss these so we have to look for the change over the time whether the amount increased or decreased in the country so if we see the amount of co2 in united kingdom decreased fine if we see the amount 
decreased but if we see in these two countries the amount of co2 emission increased so this one is for italy and this one is for portugal and this one is for united kingdom however this one is for sweden so we can say that over the period the co2 emission increased in portugal and italy however there was a decrease in the amount of co2 emission in united kingdom and in sweden so this is how we make two sentences one was about maximum and minimum value second point was about the increase and decrease in the amount so we have to make two or three sentences in the overview so let's look at the board how i describe this information in two sentences how i compare those two sentences with each other how i'm going to compare the countries and years so let's look on the board now i have done writing the overview on the board so we will uh, read this overview i will read for you and i will teach you how to write the overview in two sentences as i discussed in our uh, last section of the video that uh, we have to make two sentences uh, in which we talked about that united kingdom had a maximum amount of co2 emission while uh, the co2 emission increased in portugal and italy there was a decrease in the co2 emitted by united kingdom and sweden over the period these were the two points that we discussed a uh, few minutes ago so now uh, i am going to describe these uh, the two main points in the sentences let's look at the board how i do this so i always start writing the overview paragraph using one word overall it's important to use because if you haven't written this word examiner will never come to know that what are you doing whether you are writing body paragraph 1 or you are writing body paragraph 2 so i recommend you to use this word if you are writing the overview overall it is clear that it is a phrase that uh, is commonly used by the students so i always prefer to use this it means that we can clearly see from the chart that we are mentioning in the overview so i use it is clear that there are some other phrases that you can also use like it is evident that it is crystal clear that it can be seen that it can be analyzed that there are lot more phrases that can be used however i recommend you to use just simple one okay so don't get in the trouble of using complex words fine it is clear that united kingdom had large amount of co2 emission during the given period as compared to sweden italy and portugal so what i have written is united kingdom had a large amount of co2 emission during the given period as you can see here on the chart united kingdom had large amount of co2 emission as compared to sweden italy and portugal if we compare with sweden italy and portugal the amount of co2 emitted by united kingdom was large the amount was large so this is how i have discussed the first point in one sentence as i talked few minutes back that we will discuss this point in our first sentence and increasing and decreasing trend in the second sentence now from here our second sentence starts noticeably so there is something that needs to be uh, noticed so what is noticeable noticeably co2 emission per person increased significantly in portugal and italy if we see increase means it went up so the first verb is increase the second form of the word increase is increased it is the second form increase is used uh, when we have to show the change that happened in the past so that's why i have used increased noticeably co2 emission per person increased significantly in portugal and italy so we, here we have portugal here we have italy it increased in portugal and italy as you can see the lines are going upward so it means that the co2 emission is increasing year by year so i have used increased so then i have used significantly significantly is a verb that is used and go along uh, with the verb and it means the amount changed a lot there was a lot of change that is important 
to be noticed so that's why i have used significantly so it increased significantly in portugal and italy while it is used when we have to compare two different times while there was a drastic decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide emission in sweden and united kingdom there was a drastic decrease decrease means the amount fell year by year as you can see it was 11 and it fell to below 10 metric tons so if we see this it increased however but it decreased over the period so this is why we use decrease there was a drastic decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide emission in sweden and the united kingdom here we have united kingdom it decreased here we have sweden it also decreased so i have used an adjective that is drastic drastic means there was a very huge change like the percentage in starting was 80 it fell to 30 or 20 so that's a drastic change we can also say that there was a dramatic change so that's why i have used drastic as you can see it was like over 10 now it fell by half it's below tick so that that was a great change to discuss so this is our complete overview of two sentences i have discussed everything the maximum value and i have compared the countries i have discussed the change that came over the years let's read it again overall it is clear that united kingdom had a large amount of co2 emission during the given period as compared to sweden italy and portugal noticeably co2 emission per person increased significantly in portugal and italy while there was a drastic decrease in the amount of co2 emission in sweden and united kingdom over the time period so this is complete overview in two sentences this is how we describe everything now we are going to do body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 so those who do not know what is body paragraph 1 and what is body paragraph 2 so these two are the detailed paragraphs these are not like overview where we haven't mentioned the actual numbers or percentages in these paragraphs we have to give the detailed description of everything we have to give the actual amount of co2 emission these two paragraphs are done according to the overview whatever we have compared in overview we must compare in the body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 those two points which we have discussed in overview must be discussed and highlighted in the body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 so that your overview is connected with body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 and your whole essay will remain in cohesion and coherence so this is how i always perform and do the task and it is important that your whole information is connected with each other so without wasting any time let's do the body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 well now i have the, uh, written the body paragraph 1 here on the board so we will discuss how to manage the information how to organize the information in body paragraph 1 so let's see how i do this i told you that we have to connect our body paragraph 1 and body paragraph 2 with the overview so the first thing that we wrote in the overview was united kingdom had maximum co2 emission while if i talk about the least amount it was in portugal so this is what i have done in the body paragraph one let's see in detail as we wrote overall word in the overview paragraph it is important to use some word uh, in the body paragraph once starting i have written in detail which means now i am going to describe everything in detail clearly so in detail uk i have started with uk as i told you that we discussed this thing in overview uk emitted a significant amount of co2 during the period significant means a large so uk emitted significant amount of co2 during the period okay now i am going to describe this information in 1967 the average co2 emission 1967 it's the starting year so we always have to start with the first year in 1967 the average co2 emission accounted for approximately 11 metric tons so in the first year how much was the co2 emission it was approximately 11 metric tons i have used this word approximately because i don't have the fair amount if we see here this is for united kingdom and it is between 10 and 12 we can't say that it's 11 but we are 
not uh, quite sure that whether it is 11 or it is below 11 or it is more than 11. So it is between 12 and 10 so it is approximately 11 so that is why I have used this word approximately. Accounted for means it was ok. So the next thing however, however is also a word that we used uh, to compare the things. Now I am going to compare this information with this. So it was having maximum however we can see it decreased over the period. So however the amount of CO2 emission decreased gradually. It decreased gradually over the years and reached exactly 10 metric tons in 1997. So I have used this adverb gradually. So when we have a large change that then we use considerably or significantly. But we have some change that is below the large amount that is not significant. It is below the significant. So then we use the word gradual. It is between slight and significant. The, med the medium value is called the gradual value. So that is why I have used gradually. It decreased gradually over the years and reached exactly means it was precisely. It was not uh, it was not 9, it was not 8, it was not 11, it was not 12, it was exactly 10. So that's why I have used exactly 10 in 1997. Let's see whether it was in 1997, it was exactly 10 as you can see. Fine. And roughly 9 metric tons in 2007. In 2007, it was roughly 9. It is between 10 and 8. Again, Roughly is used for approximately. We have rough idea. So that is why I have used roughly 9 metric tons in 2007. Here we have completed discussing United Kingdom. So the next thing that we discuss uh, is Portugal. Portugal was having least amount of CO2 emission if you can see. However, it increased. So I have picked these two because of having two different trends. It was having maximum value, it was having least value. It was decreasing, however, it was increasing. So we have a great comparison for these two countries. So that's why I have chosen these two countries. Let's see how I have written Portugal. I have started with in contrast. In contrast means I am comparing. We have something different for this. In contrast, in spite of emitting least amount of CO2, in spite of emitting the mean of this phrase is however it was having. It is admittedly true that it was having this however. So in spite of emitting least amount of CO2, the emission per person increased significantly in Portugal over time. However, it was having least amount than other countries but the value or the amount of CO2 emission increased over time. Fine. So now I am going to describe these things in the next sentences. I have firstly given the main heading. Now I am going to describe it. So uh, what I have written, let's see. Starting from roughly 2 metric tons. Again, I have used the word roughly because uh, it was not exactly 2 metric tons. Okay, starting from roughly 2 metric tons in 1967, the CO2 emission increased to 4 metric tons in 1997, it increased to 4 metric tons in 1997 and it accounted for nearly 6 metric tons eventually, eventually means lastly, in the last, in the end, 6 metric tons eventually. So eventually it was nearly 6 metric tons, that is why I have used nearly, it was near about 6 metric tons. So now we have done discussing the body paragraph 1. Now we will move towards the body paragraph 2. We are left with these two countries and the great thing that I want you to notice is again we are having different trends in these two countries. So it is going to be a wonderful comparison in body paragraph 2. Now let us see how I write body paragraph 2. Now we will look at body paragraph 2. So I would like you to see the chart before writing the body paragraph 2. As I told you, now we only have Sweden and Italy. This is Sweden, this is Italy. Let's see the trends before writing the description. It increased 
it also increased it decreased while it increased here it surpassed the italy the co2 emission of sweden surpassed the italy and decreased it surpassed and increased and reached nearly eight so we are going to describe this surpassing movement also so let's look at the board fine moving further now we are moving further the other two countries witnessing noticeable changes in co2 emission per person were sweden and italy now i i am making sure the examiner that now i am going to discuss sweden and italy okay fine per person co2 emission in sweden was a bit over 8 metric tons it was a bit over a little over 8 metric tons in sweden fine whereas it was only 4 metric tons in italy in italy it was only 4 metric ton so we have discussed first year there was a sudden increase in the co2 emission in both the nations and the average of co2 reached roughly 10 metric tons in sweden fine okay if we see in both the countries the percentage increased fine that's what i have written in both the nations and the average of co2 reached roughly 10 in sweden it reached roughly 10 in sweden it was approximately 10 in sweden fine while it passed 6 metric tons in italy in 1990 in 1977 while it passed 6 metric tons in italy in 1977 so here first two years are complete fine. now we are going to discuss the rest of the years while the emission dropped sharply to below 6 metric tons in sweden it dropped sharply so it dropped sharply to below 6 metric tons in sweden fine the co2 emission witnessed a significant increase in italy it increased in italy as you can see it witnessed an increase in italy fine and surpassed sorry instead of writing italy we have to write sweden it surpassed sweden in 1987 as you can see in this year it is crossing the sweden it surpassed sweden in 1987 and reached nearly 8 metric tons in last year and reached nearly 8 metric tons in last year so here our body paragraph 2 is also complete so as you have seen that writing the line chart is not a big deal we have to skip some unnecessary information uh, from the chart and we have to just give the main points in the line chart it's really important to mention the surpassing points also where the lines intersect it is important to mention those also so here our line chart is complete if you have any inquiries just message me in the comment box i have an instagram account that is eyes of deep official you can message directly over there also don't worry we are going to make five or six videos more on the more complex line charts to understand it well so stay connected with me i will help you with everything that you need fine thanks for watching the video